Hey y'all, happy Monday. So this week we're going to really start digging into Elijah and his life and the God of Elijah, the God on whom Elijah call, called and saw great and mighty acts of power. So we're going to read a lot of scripture over this week. We're going to um, set the the stage as far as history, what was going on. Um, and so I am, you know, always just amazed at God. Just amazed. So we're going to be in 1 Kings quite a bit. And I do want to make mention now, before I forget it, tomorrow night is Women in the Word. So if you're interested in coming, um, let me know. Send me a message or email, and I'll, I'll let you know where it's going to be. All right. So I have <laughs> my King James Amplified Classic, which, of course, I always use. But um, the wording in the message translation was really great for part of what we're going to read. From First Kings really puts it in plain language. Okay, so setting the stage. Israel at this point in time is divided into two kingdoms. We have Judah and Israel. So Judah is separated from Israel. And so if you are reading in First Kings, um Oh, I need that. Um, if you're reading in 1 Kings, which I encourage you to, because the history of the Israelite people is amazing. And <laughs> I don't know about you, but as I'm reading, I'm like, why in the world did they do that? And then at the same time, you know, I see going through life and I'm going, why in the world did we do that? And so we can see, um, you know, Every word of scripture is God-breathed, and it is for our, our good, reproof, correction, training in righteousness. You can read that all in 2 Timothy. Um, so Israel is in two kingdoms. We have the king of Judah. We have the king of Israel. And um, Ahab is the king of Israel when Elijah comes on the scene. And so the very first time that we come across Elijah in scripture is 1 Kings 16. And think about just how quickly this progresses. Um, 1 Kings 7 or 17, I said 16. 1 Kings 17 is the very first time that we read about Elijah. And then in 1 Kings 18 is where we have the showdown on Mount Carmel. Um, so he's really fast, <laughs> and um, one thing that I think is worth saying and is evident, and again, it goes into what we've been talking about, what we ended on Friday, that there is time and seasons. And for the Lord, timing is everything. Your purpose and your being here is for right now. And the things that God wants to do in and through your life are for such a time as this. And so that same thing can be said for Elijah. Again, he comes on the scene. The, if you, you would think that this great, amazing, just mighty prophet of God, the one who calls fire down from heaven to consume an offering or a sacrifice, would be talked about a little more than just a couple of chapters <laughs> or just the previous chapter before he, he comes on the, the scene. And so I think that, that that really adds to or solidifies or should let you know that when it's time, it's time. <laughs> and so Elijah comes on the scene and then the showdown happens. And um, the Lord, <laughs> for him, it's about timing. And his timing is for the harvest into the kingdom. The Lord's timing does things to capitalize on opportunity that the, the largest crowds are watching. How many people are going to be drawn in and affected and brought into the kingdom of God? And so Ahab is the king of Israel at this time. And Ahab's wife was Jezebel. <laughs> Um, I, w I wonder, it would be interesting to know all of the things that are running through your mind right now. That's where Jezebel came from. 
And so um, that sets the stage a little bit. Man, we're already at five minutes. And so we'll pick up here tomorrow and talk about King Ahab and his wife Jezebel just a little bit. So I'll see you then. Remember, Women in the Word tomorrow night at 730. Bye, y'all.